Well, what do voters make of it all? In just over a fortnight's time, two crucial by-elections will be taking place. Andy Davis is in Tiverton and Honiton, which has been a pretty safe Conservative seat, but the Liberal Democrats are mounting a challenge. First, though, let's go to Wakefield, where current polls suggest the Tories could be heading for a catastrophic defeat. Our Home Affairs correspondent Darshna Sonny is there. Darshna. Well, it was much quieter than usual here today, Cathy, and that's partly because there's a national bus strike going on across Yorkshire, so fewer people were coming into town. And that's just one of the issues, one of the local issues that people here kept raising with me as I spent the day chatting to people. It came up as often as anything that's going on nationally. As for that no confidence vote, well, people here have been saying to me that sometimes Wakefield can seem more than 200 miles from Westminster. They say that there's a feeling that people there are out of touch with what's going on locally. And that feeling is partly, of course, why Boris Johnson won in 2019, but it's also partly why he could lose the by-election in two weeks' time. Now, in that uh, 2019 election, people here cited things such as Brexit, and in two weeks' time, the by-election will fall exactly six years to the day of the Brexit referendum. People here have been saying that those issues are coming up again and again. Although the Tories were, they did so well here, they won 3,000. There was a huge swing to the Tories. There was a shock poll here at the weekend, which will only add to Boris Johnson's woes. The poll suggested that people could be turning back towards Labour. It found that issues like Partygate are playing heavily on people's minds here. And that just as they turned to the Tories, they may now turn back to the Labour. And this poll found that amongst every age group, people are thinking this way. Every age group except the over 65s. And that's exactly what we found here today as we spent the day talking to voters. I feel it's a disgrace on the other members of the Conservative Party. I think it's been a tough time for everybody. And I think that everyone should have got behind our leader and supported him. So how do you feel about the no confidence vote? I'm very happy about it because I do not have any confidence in him at all. So Why not? Um, just everything that he does. He, a leader is supposed to follow, uh, lead by example and he is not leading by example and in any way in the slightest. This party gate, although it's bad, it's been going on for months and we really need to move on and concentrate on his energy prices, the, the cost of living, uh, and everything else that's, that's happening at the moment. And I think we just need to knuckle down and get on with it. They're all well, voting they're against him. I think it's awful. So you think Boris is doing a good job? I do, yeah. And I think we'd do a lot worse if he weren't there. Because there's nobody else to fall back on, have they? I have to say that view there that people are sick of hearing about this was quite a popular one here today. A lot of people said the same thing to us. Well, that's the view here in the north in a so-called red wall seat. What about the so-called blue wall seats? On the same day in two weeks, there'll be a by-election in the south. And to gauge the mood there, our correspondent Andy Davis. MPs are having to vote tonight without knowing how a by-election like this could play out and how it does eventually play out could have very real significance because unlike Wakefield, this is traditionally a safe Tory seat. We're in the southwest of England. This isn't so-called Red Wall territory and the seat is only vacant because the Tory MP who held it, Neil Parrish, resigned after he was caught looking at pornography on his phone in the House of Commons. The Tories are defending a majority of just over 24,000. But the Lib Dems, whose former leader, incidentally, Tim Farron, is campaigning here tonight, point to how they overturned a similar Tory majority in North Shropshire in the by-election held there last December. And they think they're in with a shot here. And perhaps unsurprisingly, given their resounding victory in the local elections last month in neighbouring Somerset. Labour, meanwhile, who polled second here in the local, uh, in the general election, they're also claiming that Tory disaffection is driving voters to them. It's fair to say that however this plays out, if it did come to a Tory defeat here in the South West, it would pose very real questions for the party and its relationship with its supporters in so-called Blue Wall territory. I spoke to some voters um, who are going to the polls in two and a half weeks and asked them what, if any, impact all of these questions around Boris Johnson and his leadership might have on their voting intentions. I should be voting for a Conservative. And would you prefer that 
to be a party under the leadership of Boris Johnson or someone else? Someone else. But you'll still vote for the party? Yes, because I don't think he'll be around very long. Oh, it's just a disgrace. No. How are you going to vote? Um, possibly Liberal Dem. How do you normally vote? Conservative. What would your message be to Tory MPs this evening? Just pull your socks up and then get on with the job. He's doing a good job. If they want something different, they should go to the people of Great Britain to change it. That's why we have voting. That's what it's for. We're traditionally Labour voters, but it might sway us to vote Lib Dem to try and get the Tories out. Yeah. Same. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> As for the Conservatives here and their view on tonight's vote in the Commons, I contacted some in the local party, but they declined to comment. I should mention, finally, that the Greens among, are among those others who are contesting this by-election. Back to you in London.